you all know by this time the terminal part of the large gut is the rectum and anal canal and I already told you the rectum and anal canal is devoid of the three cardinal features of the large gut that is it is devoid of tinea coli, appendices epiploica and hostations. And this is the specimen of rectum and anal canal where the segment colon ends the rectum starts. The length of rectum is about 12 centimeter and the length of anal canal is about 3.8 centimeter. And you can see the tinea here, can you see the tinea? Tinea is there means it is not rectum. So, it is a sigmoid colon. So, here is the rectosigmoid junction. The rectosigmoid junction, it is at the level of sacral 3 vertebra. This is a sacrum. The sacrum 3 vertebra means H1, H2 and H3. So, this rectum starts at the level of S3 vertebra. So, this sigmoid colon extends up to this. Then the rectum starts here. So, this is the recto sigmoid junction it is identified by the presence of this tinea which is present in the sigmoid colon not in the rectum. And this rectum it is occupied or it is in present in front of the concavity of the pelvic surface of sacrum. So, this is concave and here is the in this concavity the rectum is there. Posterally, there is a convexity here because it has to accommodate the concavity of the sacrum. So, if I keep here, here also in the pelvis, so this concavity of the sacrum, the convexity of the rectum, they are fitted. So, beyond the sacrum and beyond the co coccyx, it is turning backwards so that the anal orifice it is directed backwards and downwards and this bending is due to one sling is there. My two finger forming a sling, muscular sling. This is called pubodectal sling. So, the pubodectal sling it attached with the sympathesis pubis in front from two sides. So, this sling from this side it coming backwards and one sling from this side backwards and encircling the posterior side of the anorectal junction. So, if I pull this one by my fingers like this, if some anteriorly it is pubis, so this is the puborectal sling, this is the anorectal junction here, attached here, then I am pulling it forwards this side, pulling it forwards. Due to the pull of the pubertal sling, there is a bending here. Because of this bending, the distal part of the rectum anal canal, it becomes convex forward. So, upper side, it is convex backward. This is segment colon, I am excluding this part. This part is convex backward, but this part is convex forward. This bending for anorectal sling, this is concavity due to the sacral concavity fitted with the rectal convexity here and here the convexity front. This is called the sacral curvature, this is called the perineal curvature. So, due, when you will hold the rectum in anatomical position, you must remember these two curvature, sacral and perineal. Beside this curvature, there are three lateral curvature there one right, one left, again one right. So, two right and one left in the middle. Along the curvature and inside, you will get the horizontal mucus folds. There you will get the rectal valves or Hostens valves. And if I see the interior, you can see these are the valves, there are all the valves, horizontal folds and some longitudinal folds are there and the lower side this part is the anal canal this one which is about 3.8 centimeter if I divide it into three compartments 15 millimeter 15 millimeter and 8 millimeter total 3.8 centimeter this upper part 
can you see the difference from this in this part there are some longitudinal mucus folds are there these folds are permanent folds they are called the anal column i am showing you the anal column they are all anal columns longitudinal folds and where the anal column ends there are some crescentic folds are there they are called the anal valves and along the line of the anal valve this is a pectinate line so the and in between the renal column anal say in between the anal column this recess is called the anal sinus so we got four terms one is anal column or column of morgagni then anal valve or valve of ball then pectinate line along the lower margin of the valve and the recesses between the columns called the anal recess and this area is lined by simple columnar or stratified columnar epithelium below the pectinate line is another line is there called hilton's line in between this area this is the intermediate part which is also about 1.5 uh, cm or 15 mm length and this part surrounded by the sphincter anal sphincter and venous plexus and below that line it is completely lined by the skin but here it is lined by the non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium similar to skin but the difference is that here you will not get the sebaceous gland and sweat gland but in the lower part though the epithelium is same but here the epithelium is lined by keratinized stratified squamous epithelium with sebaceous and sweat glands and here also you can see near the orifice there are tuft of hair this tuft of hair indicates this is the specimen of male individual in case of female we will not get all this tuft of hair when you are asked if this is the specimen of male or female just you look at this tuft of hair are present or not if present male if not female so how to hold it finally i am holding the rectum and anal canal in the anatomical position this is my it will be in the mid line there is a concavity forwards in the sacral curvature in my palm of the hand and here is the by my other hand i will make a convexity in the lower part where there is called the perineal curvature so here sacral curvature the concave forward perineal curvature the convex forward and the anal orifice downwards and backwards like this and my this finger at the junction of anal rectal junction or also it is pulled by the puborectal sling so this is the finally the anatomical position of rectum anal canal